All hope is lost for Halo Infinite. The correct answer to the question, who is the worst game developer, is 343 Industries. It's 343 might be one of the worst managed companies ever. After the Halo is dead. Halo Infinite is dead. Halo has been going through what feels like a perpetual rough patch for a decade now. This game has been incredibly frustrating since launch. When people want this thing that's already fucking iconic as shit! You have the gall to do that to the franchise. That blows my fucking mind. Halo Infinite is dead. It's dead. It, it, it may still have a following. We launched Xbox 18 years ago with a game reviewers called the definitive reason to own an Xbox. Well, because humanity was and is worth saving, next holiday, we will launch Project Scarlet with Halo. Halo comes with really big expectations, historical expectations about what a Halo game is. You know, a Halo game is a great epic single player campaign, but it's also one you can play with friends. Epic Halo is a multiplayer game, and now we've added on free to play. Halo comes with Forge. Well, where's our UGC content? It is an absolutely incredible honor to be part of shepherding a franchise that has meant so much to so many and for so long. Also, what is it now and what is going to make it Halo for years to come? We have to be able to respect that legacy that we've come from to help make sure that Halo doesn't just become an amalgamation of what the market is currently doing, but that what makes Halo unique remains unique for our players, our community, and for the industry. Infinite, we want it to be absolutely world-class experience. I wanted it to be one of the best, best PC games available. To build Halo Infinite, 343 Industries revisited how our tools operate. We had to create an engine that was more powerful for next generation development, but also more nimble so that creatives and engineers are able to work more easily and iterate faster. This technical groundwork is vital to build a platform for the future of Halo. It's a really exciting space to work because the technology is always changing. You're always solving for different kinds of problems and you get to explore 
how do I make this more interesting? How can I use these tools? How can I make this more interactive? Or how can I make this more dynamic for this experience? So you're never going to do the same thing twice. You have to make tools that allow you to make new features that maybe weren't thought about. You've got to give the content creators room to ideate outside of that. Designers are more empowered themselves to actually tackle a problem and prototype something quicker and faster than we've ever been able to before. We really are building it from the ground up to be a great game for PC players who love to customize the experience the way that they want to. I'm really, really excited with what we've built. I'm really excited with the features that we have right out of the gate. I think when PC players sit down with our game, they're going to go, oh, okay, this is made by PC players. I think as a PC developer, what gets us excited is knowing that we're going to be on a journey with our, with our players on PC. That is, uh, their setup evolves, their hardware evolves. As they identify issues for us, it's going to be a really lively conversation back and forth. And we'll continue to bring support to PC, PC players down the line as part of our seasonal experience. I think it's going to be a fun journey for all of us. We now have the tools to bring this world and universe to life in a way that we only dreamed of with Halo 4. And when I look at where we're going with Infinite, it does feel like we're just getting started. Halo Infinite had six years in the oven, an estimated $500 million, and the backing of Microsoft. With all this considered, what could go wrong? At the beginning of development, 343 decided to look into and create a brand new engine used for Halo Infinite. Halo 5 was using a very heavily modified version of Bungie's old engine, but the problem with this engine was that it was very limited and also very complicated to use, and if they wanted to get the most out of the Series X, they needed a new engine that slip space. For all intents and purposes, this is a new engine, and this is likely where most of the work that was ever saved from a Halo 6 remains. The actual purpose of the slip space engine doesn't appear to be just visual enhancements, obviously. Instead, it was designed for ease of use and quickly updating assets in a game without lengthy builds and such. The implication here being it was going to be a live service game. It's a spiritual reboot of sorts, whatever that means. And so what they set themselves up for was an insurmountable challenge of not only building a game based on specs of a console that they didn't quite know, they also had to completely build a new game engine, and then they also set up the fact that they were giving themselves a hard deadline of holiday 2020. That was a really big, audacious goal that 343 and Microsoft sent out. And to do that, Microsoft opened up the checkbooks and I was giving them hundreds of millions of dollars at this point to help make that happen and fund this adventure here. There was suspicion Infinite had a troubled development since the beginning, especially with all the shadiness surrounding the game's progress. In 2019, it became evident that despite the stunning 2018 teaser, Halo Infinite had entered crisis mode. 343 Industries at this time was said to not be exactly unified in their efforts. It was even said that the creative direction of the game was split multiple directions, where one developer described the process of Infinite as four to five games being developed simultaneously. The constant movement of talent and workers, interrupted by Halo Infinite's six-year development cycle on many occasions, and amplified other problems like mismanagement, scope creep, and COVID-19. Shipping this game was hard, like COVID smacked us in the face in the middle of it all, and we want to make sure it's right. Most people were working from home as Kyogre attacked, and it wasn't the most productive time in the games industry. Several developers described 343 as being split into factions with conflicting ideas. Workers at the studio were said to be fighting with each other for company resources. Making a game is hard. Making a game and an engine at the same time is very hard. Doing all that and waging war with your own coworkers that's borderline unimaginable. Much of the workforce at the studio was supplemented by short-term contract workers, where many were cut loose from the company after only 18 months of work. This regular attrition did nothing to assist in this troubled development. Along with contract workers as well, 343 outsourced a significant portion of Infinite's development to third-party studios. Skybox Labs would be added as a co-developer on the project, handling some pretty integral aspects of the game, like 
visuals and AI. Members from studios like The Coalition were brought on as well. Something I had heard about this trailer is that this trailer really wasn't built by 343. They outsourced this to another company to build it to help them get ready for E3, which outsourcing has been a major component of 343's strategy for building out Halo Infinite. On July 23rd, 2020, 343 Industries showcased their progress in Halo Infinite. Immediately, fan reaction was mixed. Oh god. Personally, I didn't think there was too much wrong with it, besides the poppin' and maybe some of the flat lighting, but, you know, well, you know whatever. That demo? That did not look good. Halo is the premier franchise for that console, and this is the first time ever the world has seen it. It needed to make a good impression, and it has done the opposite. Ah! They ended up releasing a trailer so bad that they had to genuinely make a blog post apology addressing the game's issues. The engine was clearly not working out how they wanted. Improved graphic fidelity was the focus of the engine, and this showed as the game demo looked almost as good as Half-Life. And this is what confuses me the most because how do you mess up the trailer? This is the part where you get to lie to the consumer. We see it time and time again. This is just gaming marketing 101 and you can't even do that? Really? Got all caught up in the console wars and so just everything got magnified. We weren't as far along or in a place that we would have liked to have been to, to land that reveal. So when the decision came to take that little breath, right, and kind of realized that we were it, not in good place. We wouldn't have shipped a, something we were proud of. It was kind of relieving. Less than a month later, on August 11th, 343 Industries and Microsoft made a decision to delay the release of their game by one year. The first one was in August 2019, where Tim Longo, who was the creative director on Halo Infinite and Halo 5 in the past, he departed due to a quote-unquote leadership shakeup, which sounds like he was fired. You're fired. Nay, it was heresy. So, in comes Mary Olsen, not the one you think. She gets promoted to lead producer, and Chris Lee, the studio head, is also now taking the reins as creative director. Two months later, shall we check in on how Mary's doing? And eh, she's gone. This isn't good. 343 would ultimately deny that any development creative issues were abound, but, you know, uh... Joe Staten is returning as the project lead for Halo Infinite's campaign. I'm speechless. Hey, you know, maybe everything will be okay. And that's all because of Joe Staten. From the outside looking in, it really does seem like Joe Staten is going to pull off the impossible and somehow save Halo Infinite. To help rate the ship, they brought on Joseph Staten one of the original creators of Halo, who was taking a 12-year hiatus from the franchise. When I played the game, I knew right away, oh wow, this is a really great novel expression of the Halo experience. It's a much more wide-open, adventure-filled, choice-filled Halo experience. It feels like Halo. That same DNA is there. It's just a wonderful new version of that. But it needs more time in the oven. To make matters worse, another high-ranking employee at 343, Chris Lee, left the company in October of 2020. He was a long-term employee in the company, working at Microsoft in the early 2000s and working on Halo since the year of 343's inception back in 2008. He'd only been the director of the Halo Infinite project since 2016. At the time, Microsoft urged fans not to panic, reassuring them that these big departures were not due to a troubled development. So this is in October, a few weeks before the game was originally supposed to launch. Now, I might not have all the details, but this kind of sounds like jumping from a sinking ship, right? In January, the campaign level and gameplay designer left 343 Industries. It's another, uh, I, I have to imagine that's not great. Joseph Staden was made head of creative, which I, I, don't, I don't know what that means. When you look at all of these issues 343 were facing, including a brand new engine they were trying to develop for a console which didn't exist at the time, significant outsourced development, turnover in key positions, trailers that regressed in quality, and then sprinkle the pandemic on top, it's not all surprising that things have not gone as smooth as many as hoped.
I'm oh. very happy to announce free-to-play multiplayer free, season free to play. and infinite story-driven campaign will launch together this holiday. Yes! A new yeah! Upon us. A new oh, I'm ready, baby. To fight. Oh, they look good. Holy together, shit. we are unstoppable. Halo is back! Are you oh, ready? fucking God, let's go! Oh, go, go, go! This does look cool. This does look cool. Okay. Oh, show me something. Show me something. Yo! <laughs> oh my god, that was so, so. Oh yes. Oh, that's toxic, but I love it. Grab hammer. Yeah! Oh, he just redirected the shot. I like the new crosshair. Double. Oh, so like sick. Some damage. <laughs> it actually looks fucking sick. Skewer. Oh, oh. oh skewer. That's a new weapon grab right one. here. Ooh, baby. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, no. Yes, 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 yes. This is, this is better than anything I would have imagined, dude. Ordnance drop inbound. Sheesh. Oh my, oh my god, look at this, man. Look at this. This is gorgeous this so is far. This is so worth it. Oh, Halo about to be too hard. Halo's back. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, the war hog on the back Get, it, I'm here. get, get in. Get the fuck in here. This is great. Sign me up. Sign me up. Oh, hello. Hey. Dude, wow, wow. <laughs>to everyone who played in the recent multiplayer flights, your passion and feedback and spectacular gameplay clips inspired all of us as we made the final push to get Halo Infinite ready for launch. As a thank you and to celebrate our 20th anniversary, we wanted to do something special. So let me hand the mic to Tom French, creative director for Halo Infinite Multiplayer. Tom? Thank you, Joseph. On behalf of the entire Halo team, it's my honor and privilege to announce that your Spartan journey begins today. Right now, you can download and start playing Season 1 of Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer beta on Xbox One, Series S, X, and PC. This is the most fun Halo campaign experience I've ever played. But do they know where to take its mission design, its story, its characters, and its world? This is the story that Halo needed after Halo 5. Halo Infinite's campaign is probably the most fun that I've had with a Halo campaign since about Halo Reach. But this game visually, if I could sum it up in a word, looks lifeless. I do still, on the other hand, think that this is probably 343's best. Infinite is the exact kind of game that the fans needed. 343 have proven that they know where to take Halo's gameplay. Even worse, mechanically, this game looks like it'll play a lot like just about everything else. It could not be more generic. And this is also one of the best video games I have ever played. So how did things turn out? Does Infinite make a big-ass Halo nerd like me happy? Satisfied? Fulfilled? It's complicated. How does Infinite carry the story forward after grabbing the sweaty chlamydia-filled baton from Halo 5? 
Does 343 respect the legacy of the franchise? Was going open world the right direction? And does Infinite deliver everything you want in a Halo campaign? But if you want my quick, easy review, B minus. 7 out of 10, B minus. It's good, not great, it's not terrible, but it's fine. This is the most fun Halo campaign experience I've ever played. And this is also one of the best video games I have ever played. Between an emotionally charged story, the sandbox style gameplay, to an absolute blast in multiplayer, Halo Infinite is undoubtedly 343's best Halo package yet. In all fairness, that isn't saying much. 343 have proven that they know where to take Halo's gameplay, but do they know where to take its mission design, its story, its characters, and its world? I'm gonna say no. In these final moments, I know what my last mission is. I need to make sure you two learn from my mistakes, become stronger because of them. So Infinite had some big shoes to fill, but it also had to figure out what it wanted to do after the backlash of the fifth game. And their decision? Fuck it. This story was fantastic. Firstly, I just want to say that this is the story that Halo needed after Halo 5, and 343 deserve a round of applause for just nailing it so much in the wake of such a bad story. I think 343 was so spooked by the failure of Halo 5 that they regressed into a story that is safe and derivative and by the numbers. In doing so, they squandered the opportunity to mature this franchise, to bring its storytelling up to a level that its audience might find engaging. I would say it's solid. I do not think the story is as good as Halo CE 2 and 3. This intro sucks for anyone who has never played a Halo game, but also sucks for anyone who has played a Halo game and has no idea what the hell is going on. I have friends, okay? I get around, and those friends like Halo. We played the game since we were kids, and they had a call to ask me about what the fuck was going on because they are confused. I think something else that this story does really well is it manages to retain that feeling of mystery that I always had from Halo 1, 2, and 3, while also explaining some things and not leaving the player completely in the dark. What does that mean exactly for you? A lot of off-screen revelations occur, and there's a lot of things that are happening in the backdrop and the background that you'll find through audio logs and this can be frustrating this is when we get to gameplay which is no doubt in my mind the best part of this entire game halo as you know it is here with just a few added tools the 30 second gameplay loop that halo is so well known for is perfect and i almost mean that literally it is as close to a perfect gameplay loop i can think of it really is the first Halo campaign that I actually want to like replay. So I just honestly think it's better than all the other ones, at least from a gameplay perspective. This is the smoothest feeling, slickest FPS on the market with real tight shooting and excellent movement. The weapon variants are great, but hot damn do they destroy the balance. If you crave a bit more excitement, you are gonna love the purple missions. These are almost like bonus levels. They put you in a huge arena with multiple objectives and you've got to fight through tons of banished reinforcements as they keep pouring into the arena. Each one of these is like 15 minutes of pure ass kicking Halo adrenaline. The open world and availability of advanced UNSC hardware makes things too easy in play. Why bother taking on a base full of banished when you can park up a tank and pepper them from a distance? Yes, legendary difficulty is hard, but traversing the map with a squad full of marines each equipped with whatever overpowered endless ammo having weapon loadout you can dream up is no challenge at all. It's fun for five minutes and the different loadouts might add some replayability, but I don't see this campaign as going down as beating Halo's 1, 2, 3, ODST or Reach. The Razorback is one of, if not the single, no, it is the single best vehicle addition since the Falcon to Halo's vehicle sandbox, which is funny because I think the Infinite's vehicle sandbox overall isn't very good, but the Razorback is a standout exception to that rule. Loading it up with marines full of like arcane sentinel beams or rocket launchers or just really OP weapons is so damn fun. Who needs the rocket hog when you can have five marines with upgraded rocket launchers in your warthog i mean come on that thing is so fun halo has evolved and adapted in just the right ways there's a certain speed to your sprint to your aim down sights timing to the time to kill 
all of it just feels right in both campaign and multiplayer. In 2001, Halo Combat Evolved changed the console shooter space. Between missions like the Silent Cartographer and Assault on the Control Room, the game showcased an effortless flow between open level exploration and tight corridor shooting. Halo Infinite is clearly inspired by Halo Combat Evolved in every sense. By far and away, the biggest innovation that Halo Infinite serves up is its open world structure. When I first saw this, I had worried that this format would come at the expense of the more linear, curated, set-piece driven missions that were Halo's bread and butter. We definitely have lost a lot of that here in Halo Infinite. To my mind, the campaign feels like it was reworked from something far more ambitious. The bread and butter parts of the campaign are repetitive and the meat of the story told through flashback cutscenes rather than something happening in the moment in-game. The campaign missions are all the same and it all suffers from being semi-open world. The campaign missions get lost in the rest of the world instead of being tightly focused areas with their own identity. Now, I'm sure that we all have a favourite level from the original trilogy, perhaps something that we play through every now and then because it's so much fun or we enjoy the challenge. I've played through this campaign a couple of times now and honestly struggle to remember any of the missions on their own. It's all just one big Halo Infinite mess. While the characters are colourful, I cannot say the same for the world space. Halo Infinite adopts a semi-open world format that I don't believe enriches the Halo franchise. This world is vast, but it lacks diversity since it doesn't have any unique biomes and its structures are all identical to each other. It looks the same from tip to toe. From the minute you touch down on Zeta Halo, you've seen all it has to offer. All you're getting here, Pacific Northwest, Forerunner dungeons, ship interiors, that's it. We're gonna send the player on this galactic romp from the ruins of Halo to the Prophet's homeworld high charity to these amazing forerunner facilities in the atmospheres of planets. The player is going to transition from mission to mission from one unexpected place to the next. Do you get what I mean? The open world is a conduit for customization and in turn, you telling your own stories about how you handled the objectives. Something I think is alluring and is in a way traditionally Halo, but usually it's in a more condensed environment that Bungie or 343 constructed for you to have a set number of tools where now it's pretty much limitless. I don't think it's making Halo an overall better game because I think we lost too much to get here. This massive open world full of propaganda towers and map markers and outposts to capture, it clearly took a huge amount of resources to create this, and 343 only have so many resources available. I think you can feel how little there was left over after 343 were done with this open world. Is Halo Infinite an awesome video game? Yes. Does it have some mediocre elements? You betcha. But I think I'm willing to admit that 343 has earned the mantle of responsibility in heralding the future of this franchise. What this game ultimately accomplished for me though, is a clear and exciting future for Halo when it was all said and done. I wasn't in love with it quite like maybe Halo 1 or ODST, but it was enough for me to start to believe. The overall experience was just such a good adventure, such an enjoyable, adventure but woven into this review has been one core message halo infinite is a good video game and it's fun and i enjoy it even though the missions are repetitive i enjoyed playing them because the sandbox and encounter design are phenomenally good i would give it a 7 out of 10 for the campaign it has some of the best if not the best gameplay in the entire halo franchise just due to all the new cool tools that you can use to kind of make yourself feel actually like the master chief However, in my opinion, it was definitely held back by kind of the repetitive mission structure and just the repetitive open world in general. I think there was a lot more cool things they could have done with the open world, and hopefully with DLC, we'll see some of this stuff come to fruition. The Halo Infinite launch was a fucking joke.
The development budget for Halo CE is not well known, but it couldn't have been a whole lot. Halo 2's budget was 40 million. After massive success, Halo 3 cost averaged out to 60 million. Halo 4 was 40 million. And Halo 5 hit over a hundred million dollars to make. And then we get to Infinite. Want to take a guess at Microsoft's budget for Infinite? One Google search will tell you. It's estimated to have cost $500 million to make. And yet somehow, Halo Infinite doesn't feel like $400 million better than Halo 5. But on the contrary, it feels like there were massive budget cuts and they went back to Halo CE budget. When you get $400 million extra dollars to build on a game that cost you $100 million, people better see and feel the difference. I have no clue what went wrong, but honestly, Microsoft would have been better off going to Vegas and throwing that money on black and hope for a hit. Because that 400 million is nowhere to be found. Please don't die. Please don't die. You're like that coffee machine, you know, from bean to cup, you fuck up. Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about why Microsoft must really hate Halo. So here's some numbers for you. Microsoft are the largest software maker in the world. They have 144,000 employees operate in over 100 countries and produce enterprise software used by every single one of the Fortune 500 companies. Last year, they generated $168 billion in revenue and currently have a market capitalization of $2.21 trillion. They recently announced an intention to spend $68 billion buying Activision for a gaming division expected to lead the Microsoft charge into an industry-wide change to subscription models, game streaming, and most importantly for Microsoft right now, the metaverse. All of which I mentioned to underline the curious case of the slowly emerging clusterfuck that is the launch of Halo Infinite. I see you. You are a fucking omni shambles. That's what you are. A game with a 10-year lifespan, but launched without a roadmap to see it through its first few months. This game is missing a lot of shit. It's missing a lot of content and features despite being in development longer than any other Halo game. The aspects of Halo most benefited by being free to play are often the first things to go in a free to play live service game. All of those things that would have been benefited by the influx of players were not benefited because they weren't there. Halo Infinite, like so many games that use this business model, launched content light. Missing modes, no forge, a lack of community features, broken custom games, broken theater, basically everything that could have been enhanced by a large community wasn't there on launch. They were missing a lot of key components. They were missing like Slayer and they were confused. 343 is like, oh, people wanted Slayer? That alone should have been a massive, I mean, the biggest red flag ever when they were confused about Slayer. The most basic game mode. If you just want to play Team Deathmatch, you can't. This game only has four playlists. Well, currently five with the Fiesta playlist, which is probably just a limited time playlist for this current event. Halo Infinite is launching with the least amount of multiplayer maps out of any Halo game ever. Uh, it's missing a bunch of, of game modes. This game doesn't have service records, doesn't have pre-game lobbies. There's also no post-game lobbies, no firefight, no progression system. There's no split screen. It's been delayed until season two. When is season two? Season two got delayed as well, so it can meet 343's high quality bar. So that's not coming until May. There's also fuck all multiplayer playlists at launch. Once again, there is no fucking infection. And this one hasn't even been mentioned. Infection does not from my average Joe point of view, it seemed like a hard mode to code. You kill a guy, he switches team. Does this shit take years to make? I feel like one programmer at 343 could get an infection mode running in like a day or two's hard work. But no infection cucks custom games really, really bad. Not that custom games even works, because not only is the game missing tons and tons of features, the stuff that is there is fucking broken. But first, let's go back to June 14th, 2021. There was a multiplayer overview that stated there would be millions of combinations for Spartans on day one of release, and that the customization is coming out of player first mentality. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not gonna let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. <laughs> A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. 
God, was that a load of bullshit? Customization Halo Infinite is bare bones and limited. It's an example of a business model absolutely crippling the hard work that the engineers put into designing this thing. Removing the player's ability to select and customize the colors of their armor was a mistake, and what they replaced that system with feels like it's not here to give me options, it's there to give the business and design team options for monetization. Who promised us the most robust customization ever, but in reality, we get something that it doesn't seem like anybody likes at all. Okay, 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 okay. I gotta give props real quick. It's actually really cool that you could replace normal limbs with robot limbs, and the reason behind this is actually pretty wholesome. It's a good piece of representation and player expression to those who are amputees. Good job with that, 343. Here's a, here, here, here's a clap. I shoot this fucking kid like four times, and it does zero damage when he has no shields. What the fuck just happened? Fuck! There is no fucking world where that kills me. You guys see me two-shot melee this guy that is weak, right? Where you at, Jay? Where you at? Where you at? Chill. This guy too. I can't kill him. I can't kill this guy. Come over here, this guy too. Come over here. That gun's fucking dog shit, bro. Can't see me. Okay, they saw me. Oh, what the fuck? Ah. What? Hey, uh, yo. I, I wish I could have seen what just happened. One of the elements of game design that adds tremendously to replayability is totally and utterly absent in Halo Infinite long-term goals. And if you ask me, the two best features that Halo has had for a long time to facilitate long-term goals are a progression system and commendations. The fact that Halo Infinite launched without any form of long-term underlying progression system is just confusing to me. Seeing that XP bar go up after every game and seeing the rank next to your name increase, giving you a cool new icon, just hits the dopamine receptors every time like nothing else. So 343 just dropped the hotfix, but unfortunately, as Sketch here says, the hotfix did not work. It has failed. I repeat, it has failed. I feel like my supply of hopium is definitely running low. I think we just have to face the reality that this game is going to take quite a long time to fix and be improved. I'm not going to lie, Halo Infinite's first event Fracture Tenrai is pretty disappointing. But unfortunately, I don't think the events have really been handled that well. This thing ended up being a cash grab and it really ruins the amount of fun that we could have had with it. I've never really thought to myself, oh, I'm so excited for the Tenrai event to come back simply because I don't think the event is that fun. There's nothing really special about it. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly speechless. I don't understand why everything about this game is so scuffed. It's just Fiesta and that's it, you know? If I want to play Fiesta, I can do that at any other time of the game. Making Fiesta the event playlist doesn't make it any more exciting for me personally. I would have understood if it took like two weeks to unlock everything, but no, it's like, it takes forever. It's going to take some sometime deep into next year. Next spring, you'll be able to unlock the entire free pass. Like, what are you kidding me? The unlocks are cool and the fact they're free is really, really nice. I just wish that the events were a little bit more special. Scuffed! Scuffed, scuffed. Player count is definitely going down 
on all the like, you know, places where we can see any publicly available information. I think we're hitting like rock bottom right now. We don't know for sure how many people are, or I guess aren't playing this game right now. We don't know what the figures are specifically. However, the one that people keep quoting and keep posting about are the Steam charts figures for Infinite's population. This is accurate information for the amount of people that are playing on Steam and as you can see, the numbers don't look fantastic. That figure right there is a 95% drawdown from the high point of like November 16th, the day after launch of like 200 and something thousand players. 95% drawdown is not great. This is not a healthy metric for the game. This is not what any of us wanted to see, like what, three months after launch. I, I would rather pay $100 for Halo Infinite, for the campaign and the multiplayer together. I'd rather pay $100 if that meant that there was no microtransactions in the game and the way you unlock all these different items is just by playing the game and completing in-game challenges and stuff like that when i saw those 15 dollars pineapples in the store i told you guys i was like nah they're trolling they're just trolling they're a bunch of trolls bro it's a tea bag for seven dollars they're trolling like bro just imagine for a second you're like tea bagging someone oh yeah yeah take that son take that and then the dude you're teabagging is like, wow, you're such, you're such a 343 shill. You actually spent $7 in the store. The prices are outrageous. And then you're like, yeah, exactly. I spent that $7 just to flex on you, bro. Get a job, loser. And then the dude getting teabags like, you're such a whale. You whales are ruining video games. 343 have seen the decline in player numbers, the dissatisfaction in the fan base, and the roasting they've taken in the media. And they've decided to take action. They're embarking on a product launch so audacious, so daring, and so unexpected that it will literally take your breath away. It's a cookbook! It's a cookbook! Maybe read the room here. Oh well, at least the Fracture event is back again. Let's see how the fans react to this. Wankers! Fucking embarrassing. Waste of our time! Fucking waste of our time! You might want to break out a can of copium for this. <laughs> Season 2, Lone Wolves. Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Now the community is really excited. There's some optimism in the community because there's a 20 second trailer that shows new content. And Lone Wolves is the name of the season. It's kind of like named after the few people still playing this game. This is the absolute bare minimum that 343 could have delivered for this season. Anything less than this would have been just like a disaster. Like one map would just, it just would not have been enough. This is the bare minimum. So I'm not gonna like super praise this, but you know, hey, look, the minimum means the minimum. So it's acceptable. Two maps. It's going to be two maps and three game modes. And they could barely make a 20 second trailer. <laughs> now for new game modes, we have Last Spartan Standing, which is kind of the BR-esque, gunfight-esque game mode. And then we have King of the Hill. We'll also get land grab later on, but that won't come until May 24th. When we dive into the gameplay, I absolutely am loving the map. I am loving both maps. I'm loving the mode. It feels fun. Like, and that's the core aspect. I'm actually having fun playing Halo, but there is not anywhere near enough here to satiate myself for another six months. So this is kind of where season two is at, right? We got the new content, which is fine. I don't really have too many qualms with the new content. And then we have the bugs that were introduced, which are obviously bad because we don't know when they're going to be fixed. And then we have the changes, which are really a mixed bag. You have changes to the movement system and the campaign, which literally nobody was asking for. To give you guys a list of what was removed, the tanker, as we know, removed. Fusion coil launching into the sky, removed being able to fly pelicans, removed. Everything that was fun about the campaign that I was excited to try when co-op releases later this year, gone. There are a variety of things that season two did not address. Now we weren't expecting them to address these things, but things like desync still exist, the progression system still sucks, the challenge system still sucks, server select still isn't in the game, and like we talked about earlier, the game just has general bugs and optimization issues and still crashes. Halo Infinite is a beautiful house with a beautiful view of what could be a beautiful future, but unfortunately it's built upon a steaming pile of shit that's slowly sliding into the ocean. These statements pretty much directly suggest what a lot of us have been speculating for a while, and that is they have been dealing with a mountain of technical debt over at 343, working with the Slipspace engine and getting it to function efficiently enough to really actually 
uh, be able to deliver live service content in a timely manner. And Joe Staten's words at the end of the video actually kind of reflect that as well. It's challenging to always be constantly open and transparent with fans because we don't want to expose them to the uncertainty and sometimes that, that churn that happens on any game development process. Fans are really soon going to be exposed to some really cool stuff that we've got going on for season two. It's taken a little bit longer to get the engine up to speed. Communication's flowing in the way that we want to, but the engine is cranking and I'm super excited about the next year and beyond. Forge will save us. It will save us. It's gonna save this game. What did you think the reaction was going to be? So 343 has given us their latest update with this latest 30 minute video by 343 industries it seems that for many all hope is lost for halo infinite so that that number one priority from a player perspective is achieving seasonality what are you talking about we also want an, ex an experience that's competitive and fair we are a very competitive game that's our dna right. that's who we are we have had to make the difficult decision not to ship campaign split screen co-op Oh no god the roadmap all right the roadmap you could call it an update you could call it a roadmap you could call it an announcement i call it the end yeah yeah <laughs> no that's what else you're you're bang it, on this, there that's, i call that's, it the uh nail in the coffin if you would and this new roadmap of exciting content is all subject to change oh what the fuck ever and then so i don't know if you said the date but the date for season three it's gonna be march 7th Halo, it's finished. I don't know if you said the date, but the date for season three, it's gonna be March 7th. Ah! Ah! <laughs> season two has been extended to last 10 months, which now triples the length it was originally intended to be. The last thing that Halo Infinite needed was another delay, and that's exactly what we got. Season three won't be six months long if we just say it's season nothing for four months. 
pushing season three although technically let's be honest what's really happening here is we're getting season three in november it's just a little baby season three so they didn't want to call it that because then they would have gotten a ton of backlash season three has officially been announced as echoes within because the echoes within me cannot stop screaming now we all knew that halo infinite was not very good before the roadmap was released but hearing them announce it just brought it into focus for everybody the cancellation of couch co-op plays into all the fears that lots of halo players who are already critical of 343 have they fear that they don't really get halo or that they're taking an approach which is too driven by data instead of a more holistic rounded approach now for my part i think they've failed to realize that the people who want couch co-op really really wanted it the proverbial nail in the coffin for me has been split screen co-op as being completely cancelled campaign co-op is essential to the experience playing halo with your friends is playing halo yeah yes the number of players are small but for many it's a key feature for playing with their friends and family and plenty of others see it as another piece of the bungie era games being chipped away at or seen as disposable in an era of online play microtransactions and corporate modern gaming none of this of course is helped by the delay to network co-op and forge not releasing with the game again those are features which many see as core to the halo experience now and an attack on one is now an attack on all of them that feature is not a priority for us at 343 industries also the way this feature was cancelled when a feature is in a semi-working state speaks volumes about the mess of the halo infinite project if before launch 343 had told us that couch co-op was cancelled because of some reason perhaps like not having enough players to support the dev time we have to concentrate our resources to make the best game possible then yeah there would have been outrage especially after these comments from body ross um and i would say for any fps going out forward we will always have split screen in going forward but doing so now after development time has been spent shows a studio in disarray it's just another sign that the game wasn't ready for launch and that 343 is still working through the backlog of issues project goals are clearly still being reprioritized to the absolute essentials to get the live service or seasonality up and running new narrative event and the narrative events the thing is and i i, I actually agree with late night on this the way they're doing their narrative events is so bad compared to so many other you know games as a service games that call of duty makes their narrative event look like shit. Uh, i can't wait to continue the story of i'm a spartan you're a spartan let's go play multiplayer and oh i can't wait for this 20 second cutscene. that's the thing they were they were really hyping that's up gonna the narrative be sick. event kyle they were hyping up the narrative event in that 30 minute video as if they didn't know like or if they like they haven't seen the narrative event so far they were acting like the narrative events so yeah. far were actually had stories he was talking about like you know we're continuing the story from season two the story from season two is you just staring at freaking sergeant arna or someone else well, while they're just talking about nothing <laughs> that's it yeah it's there is no there's I, no yeah, story we all know that it's dude it's uh, just watching the 30 minute video dude it was like satire i couldn't believe it it was this has been criticized that your your in-game narrative events your your narratives that you're building in your universe are shit but oh, I, yeah. there's another yeah. beta in this in this uh in this whatever you want to call it the winter update thing and that is match XP beta. Wow. Do you know what that is, Kyle, exactly? Um, no, I'm gonna guess it's- It's not a progression it's almost system. Like half, no, it's not a half progression of a system. ranking system. It's not. It's just XP. I've never heard of a, a match XP beta or like a developer needing to flight or test a progression system after a game's full release. Okay, what is it's, it? It's you will unlock battle pass ranks based off of like your performance in game, which is in every single game that exists. And they were taunting this as like a cool thing. Along with this in season three, we're also gonna get in game reporting. Get hyped everyone. You're gonna be able to get more robust in game reporting in 2023. That's gonna do it. That's gonna save Halo. What really struck me about this update is the complete lack of decent public relations since coming Coming out of 343 why not call the winter update season three is literally defeat from the jaws of victory now it sounds like from this quote we knew that if we tried to release season three on november 8th when mm -hmm. season two ends that we would really negatively impact our ability to be consistent the way we want to at a high level of quality for all of calendar year 23 like we knew, we, we saw that that there are some internal processes regarding publishing seasonal content and that's why this is a winter update and not season three, but why not just simply rename it season three or even 2.5 if you feel it's not big enough. What should worry 343 is the way fan reaction crossed over to YouTubers and journalists who don't ordinarily cover Halo news. 
It seems everybody was dunking on 343 last week, which just shows how bad this has become. These creators speak to players of other games, which Halo will need to attract in the coming months and years to regain its own player base. At this stage, without multiple successful updates, why would anybody play Halo if they aren't already a big fan of the game? When even Ubernick is making even remotely critical videos, you know you've got a problem. Halo is dead. Halo Infinite is dead. The correct answer to the question, who is the worst game developer, is 343 Industries. In this one foul swoop, 343, you have finally and completely lost any and all trust and faith I had in you as a company, as a brand, and as the shepherds of Halo. There's still such a high demand for it. You already have something so iconic that people want. Why fuck around with other new shit when people want this thing that's already fucking iconic as shit? It doesn't make any sense, man. But you know, as somebody that is a Halo fan, as somebody that pretty much treated this as like the Xbox's main pillar, it's a shame to know that 343 Industries is so blunderingly brain damaged that they cannot handle creating a new goddamn Halo game. It's done. There's no chance of a revival. I, I don't know. You know, yeah. before, I, I knew Infinite was dead, but I, th I had a glimmer of hope that maybe Forge would revive it. This is so garbage. There's zero chance Infinite comes back and it's just lost me completely now. And I, I'm not coming back. And you know what? For God's sakes, Fire 343, get a studio in there that knows how to make Halo because this is garbage. Wow. I mean, where do we even begin? I mean, obviously this was not well received by literally anyone. This is a disaster and it's all on the shoulders of bonnie ross kiki wolfkill frank o'connor and phil spencer as well as any xbox and microsoft leadership involved with the production and planning for this game you all fucked up Bonnie Ross is leaving 343. While I had hoped to stay with Halo until we had released the winter update, I'm letting you know I will be leaving 343 and attending to a family medical issue. I am incredibly proud of the work everyone at 343 Industries has done with Halo Infinite, the Master Chief Collection, the Halo television series, and so much more. It has been an honor to serve alongside the team for the last 15 years and to be a part of a universe that I love. Thank you to everyone in the Halo community for your support. Halo's future is bright. I cannot wait for all of you to experience what we have in store. The cheer alongside you as a fan at the Halo World Championship in October. Axios, Bonnie Ross. Thank you to Bonnie Ross for having saved Halo because Microsoft was done with Halo after Halo 3. She did keep Halo alive and we thank her for her work on Halo. And we certainly look forward to seeing who will replace her. I think anything is on the table for 343 and Halo right now. It's going to be interesting to see who fills her spot at the top because her role was the role at 343. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens and how that role gets filled and if 343 change their direction with the franchise in the future because of this. This could have long lasting power, but there's also that thing that could happen where if it's a disaster out of the gate, you never really recover from that. And you don't want to do that with your marquee title. This is literally the most important game franchise that Xbox has. It's not even close. And that might weigh heavily on the decision makers of Microsoft. Halo Infinite is not in good shape. It's not in a good position. It has not lived up to the goals that Microsoft initially outset for 343 when launching this. It also is not living up to the financial side either. It's just almost universally is not meeting expectation. It has been a slow slog of poor announcements and releases. And despite the fact that we all agree that the gun game still feels like classic Halo, like everything else is sort of missing the mark. We are officially in shakeup territory here after Bonnie Ross announced she's leaving 343. The technical development lead at 343, David Berger, is leaving the company. This is huge because this guy is basically responsible for the engine that Halo Infinite uses. The management reshuffle that we've all been expecting has finally happened. It took hundreds of millions of dollars and this title to get there. And I'll be curious to see what happens with 343 now. This is creeping into disaster territory.
Whoever's working on MCC is killing it. With Bonnie Ross resigning as head of 343 Industries due to unfortunate circumstances, a replacement has already been found. Pierre Hintzer is the new head of the studio. Hintzer has worked in the video games industry for over 25 years, employed by companies like Sega, EA, and even Xbox's rival PlayStation before securing a job as head of publishing for 343 in 2018. His first job was to lead the progress on fixing the Master Chief Collection after its... Rocky launch. Studio veteran and production lead Pierre Hintz will become studio head of 343 effective immediately, leading the studio's ongoing development of Halo Infinite and the Master Chief Collection, as well as future games. The senior leadership team will expand with new roles. Elizabeth Van Wyck is now leading biz operations. I believe Brian Koski is the GM of the franchise, and then Pierre is now the studio head. This is Microsoft making a big change. Ultimately, this move had to happen. Not only the whole Halo community, but the broader gaming community wanted to see things change. Have a reshuffle, put some new people at the top, change things up a bit. So I think this is going to have a big impact. However, it's going to take time to see these changes at the studio, and even longer for us to see them as players. This is a make or break moment for Halo. This might be the last straw for 343. If this doesn't go well, we're going to be in for a bumpy ride next year. This is kind of like the update they have to do in order for them to start landing every update afterwards. They have to push something like this out, giving forge to the community, setting things up for their more consistent pacing of seasonal updates in order for them to actually really start nailing consistent season after season and proving to their fans and the community that they can improve this game on a faster rate than what they did from launch until now because it's insane that it has been a year and we're looking at the amount of content and updates that we got in this last year. What has 343 got? It's been a year since the release of the game and not a lot has been done with the game. It's mostly the exact same thing from launch. The winter update is our holiday celebration of all things Halo. We're delivering our campaign network co-op, our Forge open beta, we're shipping a whole bunch of cool things inside of our free-to-play multiplayer product. It's all free, coming out on November 8th of this year. There wasn't a lot to talk about when it comes to the missing content for the game. Your firefights, your infections, your griff balls. Yeah, all those modes are still MIA and there's no real update on when or if they're ever going to arrive to the game. There's a lot that Halo Infinite still needs to work on. There's fucking zero social features in this game. A game that was built off being a social party shooter. They've stripped every social feature down. Why do you think no one's playing this game? Because their friends aren't playing it. And when they try to play with their friends, more often than not, the game has problems. Like custom games is still completely broken. The stuff looks incredibly exciting to play on and the potential is absolutely there. I'm not quite sure if this is enough to save Halo. The winter update, it's going to be 343's big make or break it moment, I think, for Halo Infinite with a lot of people. The last year has been very confusing. I'm not quite sure why the winter update took a full year, because when you look at other game studios that had rough launches, 343 is much further behind the curb than a lot of these studios. Even Battlefield 2042, as insane as this sounds, is further along than Halo Infinite is. I am trying to be realistic with my expectations here. This is the update they have to do in order to start landing every update afterwards and really broaden the scope of what players can hopefully expect with Infinite in its second year. Is there any hope? As long as there are players, there is hope. The Winter Update is the first step on the road to making Halo Infinite a truly feature complete game. With more maps and game modes and crucially Forge launching with this update, the community can let loose its creativity and fill in the gaps that Halo Infinite launched with. And with Season 3 expected to be the true launch of Halo's live service, there may finally be some light at the end of the tunnel. So you got the Griffball boys, and they're like, all right, guys, we're, we're holding up this side. And then you got the Firefight game, who's holding up that side. Then the custom game Chads and Forge crew swagger in, and they push the statue higher into the air. 
the co-op campaign homies arrive, and now they're they're helping out. The modders come in, they push a button, and a giant metal arm shoots underneath and pushes the statue even higher than what was previously imagined. Then the montagers and machinima crowd show up, and they provide stability support. Don't worry guys, we got your backs. Then the competitive ranked players come in, the pro players, and suddenly the statue is raised so fucking high off the ground that people looking at other statues can't help but turn their heads and say, what's that? What's that? It's fucking Halo.